Lesson four, we are looking at what? Facilitating iteration execution. So this is going to be the fastest uh, lesson, but trust me, you're not going to miss anything. You just want to give me your full attention on divided, right? There are six different components and we want to go through them in a way that you're going to understand very fast, but missing nothing. So now for every agenda, from planning to uh, team scene to uh, backlog refinement, all you need is to understand what the agenda. So number one, when we say spring planning, what are we expecting us to do? The spring plan is with your team. I'm sure you, I'm aware you know that. So the first thing for you to plan effectively, what do you need to do? Establish your capacity. We've already seen how we can establish capacity, right? Who is available? And then we do what? Story analysis and estimation, which we've already seen that as well. We pick up a story and then we analyze it. Now, picking up a story is you want to bake cake. And then in order to bake cake, you uh, let's say you want to do the icing. Let's consider icing as a component of the story. So now you need to analyze. If I want to bake a cake that is, uh, let's say, this big, would this cake be, would this icing be enough? Do I need to uh, uh, add more sugar? Do I need to add more of this? Now, can I mix it in one bowl or can I break it down into two different bowls? Right. So that is what we're considering when we're talking about story analysis and estimation. So based on that, you can now. Uh, effectively say that, okay, you know what? Uh, this cake is too big to ice it like in one uh, heap. So we're going to break down the icing into three components. We're going to mount the cake into four different components and we're going to do the icing separately and then mash it together. So that's story estimation. And then now taxing is optional. What is taxing? Taxing simply means or uh, you say, okay, you might say you want to do icing for the cake. It includes different, different components, right? You might just consider this as icing, or you might break it down into blending the sugar, uh, adding the icing uh, sugar on the sugar, and then maybe ask, uh, adding whatsoever is going to make it. Now, those are the different tags. Or you might just say, okay, icing is going to take me 25 minutes, and you did that as 25 minutes. Or you might decide to break it into tags. Adding the sugar will take me two minutes. Blending is going to take me five minutes and all of that. And then we talk about the goal. What is the goal? The goal is that by the end of this session, we want to be able to effectively ice the cake. So the goal is a summary of the work that needs to be done. So if your goal is not only to ice the cake, but ice the cake and mount it, what's going to be the goal? By the end of Today, I want to be able to ice the cake and mount it. All right? Why am I using known software language? Because your team, that the technical expert, they know exactly how to combine that. So it's not something that you guess from your head. It's now you explain to them what we mean by an iteration goal. And then the team commit to, and this is where Damian was saying, oh, can we ask them to commit by using a piece of five? Yes, we can ask them. Okay, team. Are you convinced that we can do this? Let me see you. Let's do a, a, a piece of five. And everyone that put their hands high five says, like, oh, we can do this. Maybe someone that put their hands up and only three is like, oh, um, uh, you can say, oh, Joy, why do you only put a three? Is there something wrong? And they can express their worries, right? And you can be able to uh, facilitate to see how we can handle that. Now, it says that it's time box four hours or less. In most of the cases, you only have this one hour in practice. Nobody will be sitting there for four hours. What are they planning for four hours? But it's recommended that it can go up to four hours, right? So that's where you now bridge the gap between theories and practice. Okay. If you do your backlog refinement very well, most of your planning will not be up to one hour. Okay. The event is for the entire team. Everyone is participating. The Scrum Master, you're facilitating, you're sharing your screen. The developers are the ones having the conversation about the story. If they're going to break them, they're the one giving the estimate. 
The PO is just observing if they have any question on clarification of the unit, the PO, you ask the PO, right? Uh, subject matter expert, SMEs, they are brought in if needed. If not, we don't need them, right? So now we already look at how to establish our capacity. What I also want you to pay attention here is about user story, refactor, and maintenance. Now, uh, you are encouraged that for every planning, make sure that majority of your work is adding value to the customer. Don't go and say, oh, we had a lot of bugs or we have a lot of other issues that have been left over. We want to focus on that on this spring. No, you want to make sure that every spring you are doing what add value to the customer. What add value to the customer is called user story. Refactor is just reviewing what is already there. It doesn't add so much value. You can plan some of the work, but, and then maintenance also, it's important, but most of your work during your spring should add value to the customer. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So we've done our story analysis and estimating what tax scene is. We've already looked at that. And the iteration goal, Iteration goal is a summary of what iteration goal doesn't mean that it needs to be one sentence. R right here, you see, you can have like three different lines. Iteration goal is simply a summary of what we need to accomplish or we need to complete. Right? So, right here, finalize this, index this. Other stories can just be listed as iteration goal. You want to capture everything that the team has committed in a summary. Now, Commitment versus adaptability. You can commit to deliver 10 story points. The fact that you commit to those 10 story points doesn't mean that by all means you must deliver them. No. The issue might come up that needs you to reshift and to refocus, right? They might bring scope in the middle of the spring. That needs you to kind of realign. So you always want to play a balance between both. If not, you might push your team member to be burned out. What are some of the best practices? Maintain time box in your meeting. Ensure that the team commit to the iteration goal by doing what, asking them, do you think it's going to work? Joy, what about you? Uh, DB, what about you? Katrin, what about you? Verify that the PO and other stakeholders don't influence the team to overcommit. Challenge the team to exceed their previous accomplishment. How do you challenge the team to uh, exceed their previous accomplishment? simply by motivating like, okay, team, I know you're doing a great job, right? Let's try to do our part. When you keep them motivated, they'll be challenged to always do more. It's not about you pushing work to them. Just keep them motivated. Ensure that the improvement items from the retrospective are put in action, right? Ensure that time is allocated for technical depth activity. What is technical depth? Technical depth is a concept you're going to come across quite often. Technical depth simply means that if we don't spend, uh, if we don't put in quality in doing any work, we'll definitely come back to it. Right? So let's say you're a student and your exams are coming up. And every time you come on to read, you just open the pages and then close it. Every time you come out to read, you open the pages and close it. Two days to the exam, what's going to happen? You'll be on fire. You need now to, to, to take away sleep and put all energy. Why? That's technical depth. You're paying every quality that you did not put in previously to, to do the work. So technical depth, it's more of compromise and quality, which means that we did not do it to the expectation of our customer. They set it back for us to do the right thing with incurring the cost, us. Right, because we're supposed to do it, but we did not do it the right way. So, what are common anti pattern? Going too deep in technical discussion, create an un unrealistic commitment, have an exact same capacity and load all the time. Need to, the team need to be growing. Focus from the scrum master on technical role rather than the facilitator role. It's an anti pattern. On that committing you to fear of failure is an anti pattern. Reserve no time to support activity. As Scrum Master, you need to spend a lot of time with your team member. Tracking iteration progress. This is the daily stand up, or it's called the team scene. 
right? The daily stand up or the team scene. What is our agenda? What did we do yesterday to advance the team goal? What are we doing today to advance the team goal? Are there any impediments? Now, in practice, you're not going to come and say, okay, uh, Kelly, what did you do yesterday to advance the team goal? And then when you answer that, you say, okay, what are you doing today? And when you answer that, you say, uh, do you have any problem? Right? Then you go to the next person, no. So we all assume that all our team members know this. If you don't know, you need to teach them how to report. So I simply come, okay, Kelly, what are your update today? Or is that, uh, or what are you working on today? And what would you like to share with the team? I should take it off from there. Now you should encourage your team members, your developers, when you take it from there, like, okay, Kelly, when you're done, pass it to the next person. So in that case, they don't feel like they're reporting to you, right? For any discussion that is taking too long, we take it to mid after. The, the time box for, for daily stand-up is 15 minutes, right? You want to make sure you keep to it. So it's not a, an opportunity for team members to come in and discuss and share their idea. It's just to share if what they're working on, if there are any blockers, if they need help from any other person. It's an alignment uh, event rather than a discussion event. Review topic capture on the meeting after the board. Involve party discussion and on involve people my leave, right? So this is a meet after event in the Scrum of Scrum. Now, anti pattern is what? Poor collaboration, lack of collective ownership. Now, when we talk of lack of collective ownership, this is when all your developers are reporting to you. You will hear something like, oh, Josephine, yesterday I did this, today I did this. I don't have any impediments. Uh, can I go? Can I drop since I've given my update? They're not giving the update to you. It's for the team. So if they feel like I've done my own part, there's no collective ownership, right? They feel like I've done my own part, I can go. So it's their meeting. They're having a conversation among themselves, not reporting to the Scrum Master. Okay, infrequent verification and integration during iteration. For instance, we are working on something and we think it's good, but we don't know because we haven't tested it. Uh, perpetual unresolved conflict within the team. Those are big anti-patterns that we want to avoid. So during the spring, uh, uh, during the daily stand-up, as we see during our demo subsequently, we share the bot, it gives progress. Everyone can see what is done. So if uh, let's say that Joy is working on story six and Monday, Joy come and report on story six, Tuesday, Joy come and report on story six, Wednesday, and he's not making any progress. What, what do we need any magic to understand that uh, there's something going on? No. Why? Because you're paying attention that she's been talking on the same thing for the past three days and nothing has been done. What are you going to do? Meet after with Joy and say, hey, Joy, uh, do you need some help? I notice we've been talking on this thing for a long time. Uh, what can we do to help you more? All right. So you're, as a Scrum Master, you observe, you sing with team members, see if they need help and all of that. So very important. Now, uh, as you are completing the work right here, look at this item, right? This, this, these are different stories, story one, two, three, four, five. When a story moves to a done column, they it read on the chart. Let's say we started with 250. When one goes down, it moves. When we complete, it must go to the done column before it reflects on the chart. So what happens if we are not closing any story to the last day of our spring? You're going to have a chart like this. At the last day, everything goes down, you see? So we don't want to do that. So the bend down chart, give us an idea of how work is being completed during the spring. On the other side, the Ben up chart gives us an idea on how we are progressing towards our goal. We committed to 45. So by day uh, 10, how many have we completed? By day 25, how many have we completed? So it gives us how we are, we are progressing to the end of our spring. And what are some of the uh, best practices during uh, 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 our daily stand-up? Now, they say facilitate mid-PI planning. In most of the cases, mid-PI planning is not, is not, an, is not a, an official event, right? Mid-P 
PI planning comes up when your team is lagging behind. When your team is lagging behind, you want to sit back and review the entire PI objective with them and see how you can help them move ahead faster. Encourage team member to point out as early as possible if they think they will miss out iteration goal, PI objective, communicate to and from the sync coaches. Very important. Encourage the use of engineering practices. What does it mean? It's just like all constant remind them that our customer really want the best from us. Make sure defects are not pushed to the IP iteration. What the IP iteration? The last iteration, right? Work is not planned. Let's not push work to the IP iteration. Facilitate preparation for the next PI. Now, by the time we start a new PI circle, we immediately start plan planning for the next PI. We don't wait till the IP iteration. Support release activities, right? Uh, we talk a bit about release and other stuff subsequently. anti pattern team get no input from the Scrum of Scrum. Scrum of Scrum is also called Team Sync. Team are unwilling to change or add objective in mid PI, right? If the team is not doing well and you advise them to take some giant step, they're not willing to do that. That's an anti pattern. Scrum Master does not does all the synchronization so the team is incapable of doing it themselves. You need to encourage your team to pull up the work across the board themselves and do their work themselves. Now, let's look at the backlog refinement. Right. What is backlog refinement? Backlog refinement typically should be done in the middle of the spring. We are preparing towards the next PI, right? Let's say, for instance, you want to travel to New York, next, uh, uh, let's say tomorrow by 2 p.m. Are you going to wait until tomorrow before you start packing your bag and checking if you know what happened? Maybe a week before you're going to buy your ticket. If you need a rental car, you book it, you make sure everything is ready. So you're getting ready in front of what? The event that is coming up. Backlog refinement is in preparation of the next iteration. So it should be done at least one week prior to the next iteration, right? So, a time box of one to two hours. In practice, most often it's, in, it's a one hour event. What is the purpose? I already say the purpose uh, provide time to identify dependency issue that could impact next iteration, ensure that there is a ready backlog for the iteration planning. Right, you just making re making ready. If you need a connection flight, if you need all of this, you are aware ahead of time. And then agile team members are in attendance, engaged. So it's for all the team members. They should be there. If you need subject matter expert, invite them. What are subject matter expert? You might be working on something that you are completely new. It's your first time working on it. Then you know that team uh, zebra. Uh, has work on it. You can invite a member from Team Zebra to be part of your backlog refinement so that they can give you share some tips on how they work on it. That member from Team Zebra is your subject matter expert. Right? So subject matter expert doesn't mean that we need to go hire somebody from, from somewhere. No. Scrum master or product owner facilitate. Scrum master most often facilitate. Right. So this is a sample of an agenda. Remember, I did say that for you to easily understand any of this event, use what? Agenda. Follow the agenda. When you follow the agenda, first they said, okay, PO present a set of candidate story that for the next iteration. What does it mean? That you can ask questions. And by asking questions now, you get to learn more. Uh, the team discuss whether the set of candidate stories should be reduced or increased. PO guide the team through the process. The team discuss story, estimate it, and split it if necessary. The PO clarifies or supplement the acceptance criteria. The team identifies dependency on other team. Action items are summarized for all story that still require external action. So in a nutshell, what is happening in the back uh, uh, log refinement? Now we want to reorder the stories, right? Who understand how stories should be reordered? The PO, 
How does the PO understand how storage should be reordered? Remember during the PI plan, we spoke about what? Business value, where we say they are aligned based on nine, 10 or so. This gives the PO the idea of what should be work on first. So he is organizing based on how these priorities are changing. And when he organizes, the, you the Scrum Master, you simply bring up the item on the top. Okay, team, this idea, the we thing we have, uh, uh, do, any, do, do we all understand what is needed to complete this work? Then they start talking and discussing and like, oh, I think we need to break it into two parts. Uh, we need to separate the back end work from the front end work because this requires different level and different set of testing. And then we break this story into two story, right? That's backlog refinement. If we have time in backlog refinement as well, we can also estimate stories. We can also assign estimate to the story. What are the best practices in backlog refinement? Maintain time box. You realize that it's a very important issue in all agile events. Time box. Maintain the right level of deep backlog versus full or, or specific stories for two iteration, right? Always plan two iteration ahead. Make sure all team members participate. This is a very important one. If not, Maybe just a few people say, oh, it's a one-story point, it's a two-story point. At the end of the day, the other don't even understand. And then when they start working on it, they go find out more about the story. And they tell you, oh, this is not going to take us just one day. This is about two weeks. And you realize you start having a lot of speed over. Invite right subject matter expert, hold the event a regular interval. This simply means that if your PI, if your backlog refinement is every Wednesday at 10 p.m., let it be every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Very important. Let it be every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Common anti-pattern. Arriving to the iteration with no ready story. The PO need to prioritize and make sure that we have items that we need to do what? We need to uh, uh, prioritize. So we don't come there before start figuring out what we need to do. Not doing the backlog refinement constantly is an anti-pattern. Team C story for the first time during iteration and PI planning. Future estimate impact stories estimate. Now, future estimate is done at the level of program, right? But this doesn't have to uh, impact story estimate because in story estimation, it's a more deeper reality. Now, when future estimate impact story estimate, what are we trying to do? We are trying to uh, kind of say that, oh, we cannot change things. Things cannot change. They should always remain the same, right? Which is not the same. Which is not the same. It's just as, okay, um, which, 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 uh, what am I going to use? I'm trying to see something that can help us understand more better. Okay, let's say that um uh, you you you're into marketing, right? And let's say you market uh you market what's the common stuff? Okay, let's say you market candies. Now you go and place an order for about two tons of candy, right? And it has an estimate of uh, a specific weight that is being shipped to you. Now, when you bring that to your own storehouse, what happened? You lose it up, right? When you lose it up, you cannot say that because this has already been measured and it was like this, you expect to have the same exact number of estimates. Why? Because when you open it up and break it down, there are certain characteristics that will affect the weight. And you might not have exact weight as it was in a very big chunk. When you start breaking it down, you might realize that, oh, it weighs a bit more or it weighs a bit less, right? Because of certain other characteristics. That is why futures are estimated in bigger story points, when you start breaking it down, there are other aspects that will come into in between that will affect and may make it more or less. 
And this is where the reality actually comes in, right? And let's say if you, you order about three different big packs, all of them will not come out the same number, despite the fact that all of them are 100 tons, 100 tons, right? Some may have more packages inside, some may have less packages inside. Okay, iteration review. Now, one of the things you want to understand is the your your agenda right Let, let's do a bit of work here let's say this is a monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday right and this is another monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday so these are these are two weeks right if we have our planning on when is it when would our next planning be when would our next planning be the next wednesday next two weeks wednesday next two weeks when is it right here right mm -hmm. yes uh when with our <coughs> where would our retrospective be no yes when should we do our retrospective after after your uh, the close of the spring um on a tuesday yeah retrospective should be done before so officially we should close our spring today start the next spring the next day retrospective mm -hmm. plus review should happen the day before the new spring now in some environment all of these are done in the row we have retrospective review and then planning all done in one day yes that's a lot <laughs> yeah so then daily stand up daily stand up uh backlog refinement should happen where somewhere here right in preparation of what does it make sense yeah yes sir. okay perfect so iteration review what are we reviewing remember when we plan work we are planning to work incrementally right let's take our 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 cake that we're building right we're trying to deliver the cake by the end of the week. So what are we going to do? We are building the cake layer after layer, right? So when we build the first layer, it's considered as a comp uh, it's considered as what? Um, a shippable increment. But at this point, we cannot release it to our client. Why? we can deploy it into an environment because it's not yet ready for release, right? And that is why we always talk about release on demand. Release on demand simply means, it doesn't mean that immediately we finish part of the product, we can ship it. There are some products that unless we add up about three or four components, we cannot ship it because it's not gonna make use, have any use to the uh, end user, right? Let's say I want a chocolate uh, vanilla cake and then you have only completed the vanilla layer. You cannot ship that part to me, and then when you come finish the second layer of chocolate, you ship that separate. That's not what I want, right? You need to make sure that even if you build the, the, the chocolate part first, you need to make sure that you build the vanilla part and integrate when you're done with it before you ship it to me. Does that make sense? Yes. Sir. So we are looking at the review we are providing what we are showcasing to our stakeholders what we have been building and we receive feedback. So the team demonstrate every story, spy, refactor, and non-functional requirement. If you understand how cake presentation is done in a wedding or so, how's it done? Like, that's more like, oh, we added this, this is the presentation, they're trying to tell you what are the different composition. That is how a demo is, right? It is, we've already done it. So we're trying to showcase the value 
of what we have done to our customer. But at this point, it's not a, it's not a wedding because in the wedding, you cannot give feedback. It's done, it's done, it's the best, right? But in a review, we can actually give feedback. So consider a review as when you're going for a cooking competition and then you do your best, you do everything, you bring it and the different chef are trying to test it to give you feedback, right? So they can either give you a thumbs up or what? A thumbs down. If they give you a thumbs down, what happened? It means you need to go back and improve it, right? If they give you a, they can still give you a thumbs up and a feedback, which you still take, take it to your retrospective and go do some work and come out with what? Improvement item. Okay. So this is attended by team and stakeholders. They are the one who attend the event. Time box, one to two hours depending on what you're working on, right? It might be less. So um, the key for your review is that start making your team member think about what they're reviewing, even when they are planning. So you don't wait till when there's a day of a review before like, oh, team, what are we reviewing? Now, uh, the best practice I do is that by the middle of the spring, I, or when we do our daily stand-up, I start already reminding my team, okay, team, zoom in into a review. Do we think uh, we can already start zooming on how we can review some of this stuff during the demo so that they stay awake? They know that, yes, we need to demo it or we need to review it, and they start preparing towards that, right? So uh, the Scrum Master is the facilitator of the review meeting, of the spring review meeting, right? attended by PO and all stakeholders. Sample iteration review agenda, right? So business context and iteration go. This normally should be done by the PO, but in most of the environment, it might be thrown to you, the Scrum Master. So what you need to do is that always meet with your PO to understand all of this prior to every review. Demo and and solicit what? Feedback on each story. Spike, refactor, and non-functional requirement. Discuss story not completed and why. Identify risks, impediment. Revise team backlog and team PI objective as needed. Best practices. Consider how and what to demo in the iteration planning. This is going to be an exam question, so pay attention to that. Make sure that the right participants are present. Ensure the team collaborate it, collaborate in its accomplishment and the stakeholder acknowledge them. Make sure different team members have the opportunity to demo. So demo is not by one person. Ensure that the team is ready for system demo and coordinate with the system team. A lot of time is spent, this anti-pattern is spent preparing for demo. Demo is mainly talk and slide as opposed to working software and hardware. POC things for the first time during system demo. System demo is not done because iteration review is enough. Team member are not invited to system demo to save time. Demos that are not interesting or relevant to stakeholders. We should not do that. All right. So the last part of it is facilitating relentless improvement. Relentless improvement is what is relentless improvement? When we talk about relentless improvement, we are talking about retrospective. Retrospective. Okay. Agile team continuously adapt to new circumstances and improve value. Understand where you are, foster culture and improve everywhere. Use retrospective as a summary point, not as a limit, right? So we're not assuming that we know it all or all what we say is going to be the final. It's more of a major point. Support continuous learning. Actively engage with other Scrum Master to drive continuous improvement. Very important. So improve everywhere. Example, ask questions to reflect, address every area that surface as a constraint to the team. 
move from manual to automated testing, co communicate with remote team, subject matter experts, etc. The team skills are preparing and running demo. So within the iteration, you want to talk about everything that you see that's not going well, right? So it's not just an avenue to say, team, what went well, what did not go well, it's the meeting, but then you have also been observing all along as a Scrum Master. So you want to make sure that you also raise up issues which the team can discuss. Then you measure progress. Now, what is measurement of progress? What are the relevant matrices that you want to use to continuously measure? Maybe the team has not been engaging well in communication and collaboration. What are some of the action points you want to set in order for your team to continuously look at how we can measure this progress, right? So you can derive ways on how to learn from your team and grow within your team. Now, uh, flow velocity measure the number of backlog items uh, in a given time frame. All right, uh, average velocity. Definitely, this is a chart you have on your backlog. Right, the number of items you committed to and the number of items you completed. So this is also a measure. You see, you see how much you have been doing. So averagely, they have a 31 average velocity. So <clears throat> this guides you on what the team is capable of, uh, of delivering. And it helps you give enough, uh, a fair prediction when you're communicating to stakeholder to watch your team, what they should expect from your team within the next couple of uh, iteration, right? So if we look at nine iteration and the summary is, is 31, if we are procrastinating towards the next iteration and we're saying five times 31, then, or five times 30, then we're making a good judgment, right? To say they should expect about 150 story points. So that's the impact of you visualizing and using matrices. Right. Now, one of the aspects which I think we're going to start seeing frequently is what we call the flow load. How many items are currently in the system? Uh, the cumulative flow, simply look at. Now, what you want to pay attention, you want to pay attention to the key. To the key. It tells you at the point, let's say, during six iteration, how many items do we have in the phone, uh, in the phone? Now you simply go to iteration number six, you draw a line from year to year. Now you realize that the, is it the purple, right? The purple part is the funny part. So if I draw a line from year to the middle and from year right to year, and I subtract this, I realize that there were 10 items. Do you see how you measure what is in, in, the, in the pipeline? How many items were completed by iteration 14? I draw a line across, then item that are in uh, this done. You see right here, done. I go to done. I draw a line from year, right to year, and then from year, I realize that 10 items were completed by item 14. Now, how many items were in the analysis phase by iteration 7? I draw a line from here, analysis phase. You can see that the analysis phase is very thin here. You see that? Almost no item. Even right here, there's no item in iteration, in the analysis iteration. So by looking at this flow chart, there are only two lines that are important, the vertical and the horizontal. So the vertical gives us what we call what? It gives us what we call the work in progress. The horizontal gives us uh, the lead time and the circle time, right? So the lead time, let's say uh, we're looking at uh, implementation. How long does it take an item in iteration seven in the implementation process to when it was done, right? You can be able to say, okay, if an item was here and to when this item was done, if I draw a straight line, you realize that most of the items that enter here are not still done, right? Most of the items that were done in here has been the item that we started here. So if I draw my straight line here, you realize that most of them were done by now. Understood? 
Is it confusing? Yes. <laughs> Can you hear it? Okay. Uh let, let me let me do another simple illustration to show you. Right. This is our chart, right? Mm -hmm. This is uh this is time duration. Mirai River time. This, this is what numbers of story point, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, I6, I what? Seven. Okay. It's only six iteration. Mm -hmm. Now we have, look at, we are adding item in the backlog, right? Item are being added in the analysis column, right? Yes. Item is going in progress, right? Yes. Item. So let's consider this column as this is work that is, the flow is definitely going to be coming in. When it goes here, it's done, right? All the items here are items that are considered done. Let's say most of what we have is starting here because that's the starting point. This is what, uh, let's consider this as ready for acceptance, right? Let's consider this as in progress. Let's consider this as uh, ready for development. Okay, so if I ask you the point that by iteration four, how many items were there in progress? What do you need to do? You draw a line up to this. Where is the column for in progress? Year and year, right? Mm -hmm. So I simply draw a line from year to year. This space simply means this is what was in progress. I subtract this from this and I know what was in progress. Is it understood? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. If I say how many items were completed by iteration six, I come to my iteration six. Right here, right? Mm -hmm. I draw my line. Which one is the done column? This one, right? So yes. the way it cut through iteration six, I'm drawing my line. And then between year and year, that's 20 minus zero. How many items were done in iteration six? 20. Understood? Mm -hmm. How many items were in progress by iteration six? This is the progress column, right? Yes. I'll come in here where the two line cat is between year and year, right? Mm -hmm. So I subtract 30 minus, let's say 21. Seven items were in progress. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. If that makes sense, then we can look at now the work that is being completed. Let's look at the work that is, uh, the duration. Now we want to look at what? The duration. Now, how long did it take items that were in, in progress in iteration two to get done, right? This iteration two, you see in progress get in here, right? All of these items are in progress. Mm -hmm. I draw a line to there. You see where I get the done column? Mm -hmm. so between this period and this period, this is the time it takes for this item to get done. Does it make sense? Yes. So it's simply by drawing those horizontal and vertical line and where they cross the point. Okay. If you don't understand when you rewatch the, the video, you will understand, so don't bother. Just take time and rewatch the video. Okay.
Perfect. Now, uh, measure the amount of each type of work in the system over time. We've just seen that, right? That's just what I was explaining to you. So you can have your chart where you can record uh, flow, story plan, story accepted, percentage of stories. These are stuff you can calculate all on your own, right? You can have these metrics to do that, but it's not that in, in, in practice, this will not really be necessary to start tracking bit by bit, bit except you want to be a superstar scrum master. And when you start being too, too detailed, you realize that you start pushing too hard on your team and they're not going to like you, right? Because you want everything to be straight, straight, straight. You want to be your friend and you want to really make sure that you're not pushing them too hard. As the initial retrospective, time box is an hour or less, right? You should ensure that you always have action item retrospective is to do what to see what we can improve so coming out of retrospective like oh we're good everything is fine no no matter how good you are you must find a way to improve so sample of an agenda review improvement backlog item targeted for iterate targeted for this iteration where we're all accomplished you, we need to start looking at what we promised last week. Did we accomplish it? If not, the, we have to discuss why we did not accomplish it, right? Did the team meet the goal? Yes or no? Collect and review the agreed upon metrics. Quality. What went where? What didn't? What can we do better next time? What can we continue doing that we are doing well? That's how simple the agenda is. But what I also recommend here is your ability to stay very creative. It's very important. Always stay very creative on top of your game. It's very important for you to, to always stay creative, always be on top of your game. Now, uh, creative, iterative, uh, retrospective. Use card. Now, most often, just ask your team member, okay, team, Pick a card, write down what you think we can improve. People start writing. And then from there, you generate discussion and put it over. Write one word to describe the iteration. How has, has someone helped you or helped the team show appreciation? These are the things that you do in the iteration. It's not about you asking like, sometimes during my iteration, a, 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 a retrospective, I'd be like, okay, team, today is appreciation day. All right, uh, Josephine, who do you like to show appreciation to? Who was helpful? Now, people get to be appreciated. When people get to be appreciated, they feel better. And you, the Scrum Master, you always need to start by showing example. You are the best team on earth. Even when they are not, they are the best team on earth. They are your team. It's by appraising them that you bring out the best in them, right? When you talk negative towards somebody, what happens? You make them become more shy or you make them pull away from you, you put them at their walls. But when you continuously praise them and encourage them, what happened? You bring out the best in them. So you can also do uh, some activities, right? Some activities uh, in order to make your team be more creative. You can do icebreaker. So an icebreak, a popular icebreaker a lot of people like using. Coach Catherine, which one do you like using? Two truth and a lie. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So we have different um, uh, icebreaker that you can also uh, use while you're doing your iteration. But then when you're do, doing icebreaker, one of the things you definitely don't, don't use sensitive uh, jokes. There are some jokes that are very sensitive, right? Don't ask who, who, who would you not rather be stuck in the boat with? That's going to bring some memory that people uh, start offending some people, right? Those are very, don't ask emotional questions, ask generic questions. Everyone can talk, uh, can talk, can talk about. Don't ask culturally sensitive questions. Encourage improvement between retrospective.
best practices, coach the team on problem-solving technique, make sure the entire team has the voice, add their voice in the retrospective, uh, ensure that the team agree on actionable improvement item anti pattern the only focus is what to improve and not what to preserve focus on problems that are outside the team control failure to achieve result invite people outside of the team especially management to your retrospective big anti pattern so if your management is attending your retrospective you're not protecting your team devop you constantly hear this question being asked to you. Have you worked in a DevOps environment before? Yes, you've worked in a DevOps. All Scrum environment are DevOps environment. DevOps simply means collaboration between the development team and the operation team. Right, the operation team are often those working at the management level and the delivery level. The development teams are those that build the work. Right, so uh, events like review, Right, review kind of integrate the collaboration between these two so that there's no separation between them. So uh, it helps us to stay compliance, operation, development, security, business, and architecture. So it kind of just a blend to make sure that uh, those at the knowledge part, the developer and those at the business part are collaborating together. Now you are going to have a couple of questions on your exam on this. Come approach to devil. Uh, Pay attention, the CAM is an abbreviation for culture, automation, lean flow, uh, measuring support, and recovery. Now, what does culture mean? Establish a culture of shared responsibility for development, deployment, and operation. Automate the continuous delivery pub pipeline. Keep batch sizes small, limit work in progress, provide extreme visibility. That's flow, right? Lean flow. Uh, measure the flow through the pipeline. Implement full stack telemetry. Architect and architect and enable low risk releases. Establish fast recovery, fast uh, revision, and fast fix. Fast fix forward. So these are. Uh, the different component. What you, you want to do is that uh, master this abbreviation and what the letter actually mean. So you, you want to master this. For your example, purpose, most often, uh, if you come to interview question, they'll hardly ask you to start explaining a calm approach to DevOps. They'll mostly ask you, what is your understanding of DevOps? which means the uh, cooperation and collaboration between development and operation, right? So we have shared culture, automation, lean flow, measurement, and recovery. So 